Hey, thanks for watching. So I just installed this cheap armrest in my 2018 Subaru BRZ and I want to give you guys a little look at how this uh, fits in the car and how it feels and should you buy it. So let's take a closer look here. This is basically a replica or a cheap version of the actual uh, armrest that can come with this car through the Subaru or Toyota dealerships. Uh, basically, it's it's a knockoff. It's from Amazon. You can find it on eBay also. But it does the job. You, know, you drill it in. You set it correctly. The hardware that comes with it isn't very good, so I would rec I'll make some recommendations later in this video. But you know, it does. It gets the job done. You can put your stuff in it. You get some privacy in this car. You know, everyone can kind of look into, especially if you're lowered. People just like literally can look into your footwell. So. You can throw your phone in there, you can throw your wallet in there, you get some privacy, and then when you're closing this, it kind of snaps open and you can leave it open like that, so it doesn't slam shut on your belongings. Then you can just close it, and there you go, hidden, and you get an armrest, and you can just, you know, shift comfortably, does not get in the way at all. If anything, it raises the bottom of this about an inch and a half, so if you are driving like normally, it doesn't affect too much. It does kind of give you a, nat a more natural position to keep your elbow in. So generally it is very comfortable. Uh, again, shifting is very good. The top here is padded pretty well. It's not very comfortable. Like, I mean, it's a sports car. It's not a Cadillac, but you know, it's comfortable. It's got a nice looking finish, I guess. It's soft touch leather with the red stitching to match the rest of the car. Um, and I have some recommendations, so if you want to install this, uh, keep in mind that the fitment is not very good. So this plastic does, it's its pretty thin and it does bend a little bit. So when you're screwing it in, the entire thing flexes a little bit. So this seam, oh, didn't want to zoom in. There's a little bit of a seam, oh boy, zoom. Not zoom, focus, all right. So there's a little bit of a seam over here and Honestly, it's not really noticeable. Your passengers won't notice, no one else will really notice. Uh, but when you close this, because of the thin plastic, the entire thing is kind of warped a little bit. And when you shut this, you get a bit of a gap here. And I can, uh, in some places it's not so bad. Like here I can barely even fit a fingernail. But here I can almost like squeeze my finger into it and like almost start raising the, the top of the armrest or the armrest lid. So that's one thing. Um, the hardware that comes with this is not very good, so you get a set of these smaller screws <clears throat> and you get these little black inserts that have uh, a metal threaded insert inside that. So I think what you're supposed to do, the instructions that come with this thing, if you get instructions, you're supposed to drill a hole, put the insert in, and that's supposed to sit just in the plastic here, and your screw is supposed to go in and tighten into that. What I did actually was I removed the entire center console. So this entire uh, black piece, I removed the entire thing. I took it up to my bedroom. I did it very cleanly, uh, drilled the holes. I took those inserts and uh, I wasn't able to go get um, some better hardware. And I recommend that you do that. But I took those inserts and I drilled the holes, put the screw in and put the inserts in from the bottom of, the, of this plastic. So what that did is it acts a little bit like a washer and a nut, and that secures it a lot better. So this is not going anywhere, this is pretty secure, and it did take me quite a bit of time to take everything apart, but I recommend that um, you do that as well, in case you have to take this apart anyway to deal with the terrible hardware that comes with it. So that being said, um, there are some advantages and disadvantages of having this. So you can see here there's a notch, and that would make sense to put a cable in here if you want to charge your phone and just throw it in there. But if your cable doesn't align properly, it'll shut on that. It's kind of a, a small notch, so hopefully your cable is not like super stiff or will fly around like mine would. But um, yeah, you want that to close all the way. Another thing is the latch on this side. It doesn't just like shut unless you like drop it or you like kind of like throw it but what I find is like when you're when you're shutting it if you don't just like bang it it's kind of aggressive you gotta like 
press in the latch and close it. Um, that is a little bit of an annoyance, but I mean, you still get an armrest out of, out of this whole thing. And uh, yeah, I like it a lot. It definitely is an improvement in this car. I will say it looks a lot more complete. Um, it adds a little bit of maturity to the interior of the car because it looks super basic. It is a sports car, very basic sports car, I guess, but you know, you want to have a little bit of a amenity. This is what you're looking for. Oh my God. All right. So here's an update. I don't, I haven't recorded anything because you know, this was really challenging so far. Um, trying to remove this whole center console so I can install this armrest. Um, the most difficult part, I probably spent over an hour just removing this. So <clears throat> if you have a newer uh, kind of BRZ or FRS or whatever that will have this limited um, setup here. I know a lot of the instructions that I found online were the, the base version with like the three basic HVAC controls. Um, the instructions were the same, but with the newer ones, this might be harder to take out. So like this, these three clips, like one here, here, and here, these were incredibly difficult to remove and you have to like reach the bottom from here. So you have to remove this panel. You gotta kind of loosen everything around here. And then you gotta like go from this side as well. Push up from the bottom, from this side and this side. And I just have a, like a whole set of different pry tools that I use to fish my way in from this corner to the middle and from this corner to the middle. Uh, eventually with some Careful prying, it finally came out, but you can see I kind of messed up the bottom edge of this. Um, but that's no worries, once everything is out, I can probably just touch that up, hide it a bit. And once everything's put to back together, I think that'll be okay. So, that is the most frustrating thing uh, with this whole process so far. Everything else is very easy. Um, removing the shift boot was very easy. Removing this is pretty easy. Um, Kind of annoying dealing with the clips from the cables that come out of, uh, sorry, the harness that goes into the traction control buttons. Um, Cause the little clip is very small, but eh, not a big deal. Nothing as bad as this. So if you guys are ever considering doing this, just set aside like maybe an hour just for this piece. The rest of this probably comes out in like half an hour, especially with the right tools. Um, just simple, like a Phillips head will be good enough and some pry tools, but save yourself some time for this. Hopefully you don't have as many issues as I did. Uh, now I just gotta take out another Phillips over there, and I believe one more on that side. Yep. Um, and this thing is out. Now it's the next day and we're gonna put this back together. So, ah, I put that too far. Well, give me a sec. Here we go. Here's the finished center console with the armrest attached. So, plug this back in. We're gonna plug power back into uh, well, the harness is back into the heat seater. What? Seat heater. And the, uh, the jack here. And then we're gonna put the shift boot back. We're gonna plug in the uh, power to the traction control buttons. Um, reattach this, snap this back into place, make sure all the screws are in, and uh, we'll be good to go. One thing is this thing is pretty cheap, so I've already noticed the material kind of stuffing up just like literally I put this in the carpet in my room and just from like just the random debris in my carpet it's like starting to stuff it up so either you want to be very careful with it or once you're ready to put it in your car uh, just give it a nice like maybe some some kind of like leather you know leather polish and maybe it'll come up a little bit nicer so let's get to this probably want to keep your 
shifter detached. I just put mine back in because I wasn't sure if I was going to be roaming around today. When you're plugging the power back into the seat heaters, if you have that for your car, just remember the, the plugs or the receptacle that's on the bottom of the buttons here is kind of like color matched to the plugs in the harness. So your blue plug goes into the blue receptacle and your white plug goes into the black receptacle. Just in case that's kind of unclear. I'm just gonna put the cigarette lighter. All those things are plugged in. I'm gonna set this down, um, make sure it's in the spot, and I'm gonna put the six screws that hold this thing down back into place. So we've got six screws. There's, they're all Phillips heads, but two of them have a uh, some kind of socket head as well. Those two are the ones that go inside um, your cup holder to bolt it down. The other four, uh, they look like they're all the exact same and two will go here, right between your shifter and your uh, seat heater controls and two go here underneath your climate control. Uh, when you're handling these screws, be very careful not to drop them. Um, inside your, like inside the gap where your center console is. You're not going to have a good time if you do that. And that, when I was taking these out, they actually weren't very tight, so I don't think you need to like stress out about like what specs are going in with or anything. Just kind of, you just hand tighten it. None of this is going anywhere. Two in at the front underneath the climate control. I'm going to put two in right here beside the shifter. We have the these two bolts. These are just going to go back into the bottom. Of this. Okay. So everything is bolted back together. So this should be. Anyway, so next step is we're going to put the this tray right back in. And this just simply should just click back into place. And I kind of scuffed mine up, so I'm just going to this and if someone asks about it, I can be like hey wasn't it worth it so let's just push this back there's three clips on the top and I believe a couple clips on the bottom so just give it a good there you go clicks into place push it back in every little spot around the edge and good to go so we are almost done. Got the shift boot here. And what you want to do is grab the plug for the traction buttons. Uh, this only goes in one way because it's notched. So you should not have any difficulty putting that right back in. There you go. That is in. Basically, what you want to do is um, this clip at the bottom, this one is very, it's pretty soft, like I could flex it with my hands. You want to put that one in first, so work from, your, from, work from the back and go towards the front. So you have four clips on the top part of it and the clip back here. Just make sure everything gets seated down properly. There we go. So that is good. 
Now, we're almost done. I didn't show this other part, but after we put this back in, there's two side plates you gotta put that go underneath the uh, knee pad. So this, you clip it in from the front first. Um, it's got like a little hook on it, so you put that part in it, and then you put this part downwards and that should secure it in place. And that should be that. So, um, two plastic pieces that go on the side. So these uh, plastic guards just go right under the um, right under the knee pad. You want to tuck the back side in, and then line it up and just clip in the four clips you see here. That's done. So here, that lines the bottom. And then, put your cup holder back in. Obligatory chain, uh, sorry, what? Obligatory uh, coin management bucket. Uh, hook up the rest of your stuff as you had. I can just now go just live inside here. Look at that. That's perfect. Get a little notch here to hide your cable. So that goes there. And you should be able to just do whatever you want now with that in your interference. Alright. So I guess that's all for the for the reassembly. Um let's do the review now. 